ഹലോ ഓൾ വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ടു ആ വീഡിയോ സീരീസ് സെഷൻ ഇൻ ദ ഫിഫ്ത് മൊഡ്യൂൾ ഫോർ നാനോ ഇലക്ട്രോണിക്സ് ആൻഡ് ദിസ് എ തേർഡ് സെഷൻ ഇൻ ദ പ്രീവിയസ് ടു സെഷൻസ് വി ഡിസ്കസ്ഡ് വോട്ട് ഇസ് പാരലൽ ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ട് വോട്ട് ആർ ദ ഹോട്ട് ഇലക്ട്രോൺ ഇഫക്റ്റ് ഇൻ പാരലൽ ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ട് ആൻഡ് വി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വിത്ത് ദ കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് പോപ്പിൻറ്റിക്കുലർ ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ട് so there we just discussed what is resonant tunneling because tunneling is the basic mechanism behind perpendicular transport today we shall see the electric field effect in super lattice uh, how perpendicular transport occurs in super lattice and what is the field effect in super lattice right so take the point fine now before we begin let me uh, remind you what the super lattice so we have this multiple quantum wells we have different types of multiple quantum wells type 1 and type 2 when your type 1 quantum well has a periodicity very small so that the um, the barrier width is too small that tunneling may occur such multiple quantum wells are called super lattice and these super lattice have a uh, some special behavior in their uh, energy states so because of that same reason the super lattice is of like uh, great research importance these days so we shall see how does the electric field affect the electron transport in super lattice uh, if you uh, remember what we uh, studied in super lattice uh, basically the electron states in super lattice uh, they are just grouped as mini bands and these mini bands are uh, like very narrow compared to the um, energy bands in crystals uh, which is obvious because the periodicity of super lattice is pretty small now what happens is when this electron in the narrow bands are affected by a electric field they show some very interesting kind of behavior a interesting kind of oscillations called the bloch oscillation so what happens is uh, see when each quantum well uh, of a particular width say a that's what how we denote the width of the quantum well so if the energy level in a quantum well of width a uh, when they form a super lattice they have some behavior or uh, they have a particular form of arrangement called the stark ladder so it's simply a ladder kind of arrangement i can show you that uh one second yeah so uh as we have seen before when it comes to the section we have some kind of a ladder arrangement here so this uh, tilt or this ladder arrangement is called stark ladder for a super lattice right so coming back so we have been saying that for a super lattice uh, when the electrons in our narrow bands are affected by electric field they exhibit bloch oscillation so what is this bloch oscillation what is a stark ladder we'll see that so uh, the energy levels in each of this quantum well of the super lattice can form a stark ladder of a step step height which is uh, defined by e into f into a where f is your applied electric field a is your quantum well width and e is of course your electrons now suppose this uh, electron band in k space is similar to our first uh, mini band we have studied this yeah so we have seen we are familiar with this diagram of super lattice we where we could see this band was uh, not continuous there was a break in band right so we are familiar with this now th- consider the lowest mini band i am considering the lowest mini band in this section right so this is uh, similar to what we have already discussed now let me define the motion in this mini band the motion of electron in this mini band can be mathematically represented by h bk by dt equal to minus ef this is h bar which means 
Planck's constant h divided by 2 pi h bar dk by dt equal to minus ef. So, when you find solution for a wave vector k from this equation, we get a equation k of t equal to k of 0 minus ef by h bar into t. So, how we can derive this? this is just by putting the boundary conditions just the way we solved for the Schrodinger wave equation. Uh, we derive the equation for a wave factor. Now, from this equation it is uh, quite evident that your wave function increases linearly with time. Okay. So, what we have just seen is uh, for considering the super lattice we have just taken the lowest mini band. So, we have various mini band 1, 2, 3 symmetric bands. So, you are considering the lowest mini band. Here, we are represented the electron motion h bar h by 2 pi k is your wave vector minus e and f your electric field. Their solution we obtained. So, from here we could see that k of t is linearly related to your time. Now, suppose the electron, see we are considering the electron motion right now. So, electron is rest at this point O, o this is my origin. Consider the electron to be initially at rest. Now, when I apply a electric field opposite to the direction of my wave vector, my wave vector is in this direction. When I am applying a electric field perpendicular to this, what happens is, my electron which is originally at rest travels start moving from O to A and then to B. At B what happens? At B their velocity drops to 0. Since the velocity drops to 0 the slope becomes 0 and at this instant the electron gets reflected. It was moving from O to A to B under the action of an electric field which is in opposite direction. On reaching B, the velocity of the electron drops to 0, the slope drops to 0 due to which the electron gets reflected to the point C. Then it moved towards D and finally to O, thereby completing a cycle. Now this kind of motion is periodic and their velocity is given by V, these are the previous stuff, is given by V equal to 1 by H dou E by dou K and the period of this motion is defined by Tb equal to 2 pi by omega b, where omega b is the frequency of your oscillation. I hope this is clear so far. So, we have been considering the, I'm sorry, we have been considering the lowest mini band of our super lattice and we considered the motion of an electron in the lowest mini band when an electric field was acting in the opposite direction. We saw what is their velocity, their periodicity and so on. I hope this is clear so far. Now what happens is that here our parameters t b and omega b see uh, they are independent of the uh, mini bands energy width the mini band has a energy width of 2 pi by d. So, they are independent of that particular value and it depends only on the periodicity of the super lattice and the electric field. So, if you want to observe this Bloch oscillation, we must have the value of Tb less than the relaxation time. So, only if Tb, when Tb is less than the relaxation time, you may you can observe Bloch oscillation but we cannot make Tb too low also 
big cause from this relation we can see when tb is made too low the value of our electric field f must be too high because they are these are inversely related now if f becomes too high it may cause tunneling and when tunneling occurs blanch oscillation cannot be observed so we want tb to be less than the relaxation time but not too low right now let's see what happens here so uh see the mini bands and their energy is shown in the left side let's see what happens here now in this mini band if uh, see if i am applying a constant electric field f in the z direction i am applying this field in the z direction this band gets tilted with a slope of minus ea and their corresponding potential energy becomes e of z equal to e not e of z equal to e not minus e f z now coming back now since our bands are inclined see uh, we have a number of electrons in these bands the electrons with the total energy et they will get trapped and they can oscillate between these points here we have a point z1 and this z2 so this electrons keep oscillating between the points z1 and z2 because the bands are inclined uh, see the electrons cannot jump to the next mini band the electron has been localized in this band when we apply a constant electric field in the z direction the band the normal bands just got tilted because of which the electrons became localized between these two points within the same mini band now if i keep on increasing f the band will get steeper this tilted by like this now it can get steeper and steeper as the band gets steeper the electrons are more localized when it gets more steeper they get more localized into a smaller smaller region and because of this the super lattice can also show tunneling and negative differential resistance so we can see that initially when there is a tunneling there is a increase in current just as in the case of resonant resonant tunneling transistors devices that we just saw so there is a and once uh, they reach this point there is a drop in current causing the negative differential resistance so we can observe this negative differential resistance when extremely high electric field is applied through the structure so if you want tunneling to occur your voltage must be e2 minus e1 divided by e and here again we can see that since we have a ndr region the super lattice can also be used for the same high frequency oscillations and high frequency amplifiers so with respect to the electric field effect in super lattice we have seen how the electron states in super lattice are grouped into mini bands and there we had a blanch oscillation and uh, in each quantum well when they get tilted there was uh, something called the stark ladder formation and we considered the lowest mini band of a super lattice we consider the electron motion when the electron moved from the origin to a point where the slope became zero they got reflected coming back to the origin and this motion was periodic 
and what was their uh, time period, their frequency, we just saw that. And to observe large oscillation, what must be the value of Tb? It must be shorter than the relaxation time, but not too low. Why? We saw that. And the tilting of mini bands, due to which uh, the electrons got localized. And finally, the NDR effect in superlattice. So these are the things that we have covered in this session. Just go through it, go through the notes. If any doubts, please let me know. We'll meet in the next session. Thank you.